Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. And we continue our series of conversations with independent analyst Himendra Hazari. In the first series, we talked about the ICICI Bank, the Infrastructure Leasing and Financial Services Group. We talked about Kotak Mahindra Bank. We talked about Yes Bank. And then we also discussed the rather unusual transaction involving HDFC, Housing Development Finance Corporation, and the IL and FS Group. In this episode, we are going to look at the circumstances under which Mr. Amitabh Choudhury was appointed as the Chief Executive Officer of Axis Bank. Now, he's been appointed for a three-year term starting the 1st of January 2019. And Mr. Hazari is going to look at whether he was an appropriate choice, why he was chosen in the, in the, in the first place, and whether he would be able to turn around the bank, which has been of late confronted with many issues of corporate asset quality, lack of competent commercial banking leadership, and poor operational risk management. Now, uh, Mr. Hazari, why have you been critical of the appointment of Mr. Amitabh Chaudhary, just because he has was earlier the chief executive officer of HDFC Standard Life, which is an insurance company. He's an outsider. He's not part of the so-called group, or some would even say clique, which had apparently lost credibility uh, under the when the bank was headed by uh, Ms. Shikha Sharma. So he is an outsider. So what if he doesn't have the kind of commercial banking experience, he would nevertheless perhaps be a person who could help improve the working of the bank. Why do you find it mysterious that such a person was appointed? See, I had two uh, could, I think attributes that the new CEO should have had in Axis Bank. One is that he should have been an outsider, which he does qualify for, because you cannot have someone associated uh, with the old CEO take charge when you know all the mistakes that the earlier one has done has to be reversed. So in that sense, I was satisfied that you appointed an outsider. Now, my second criteria was that you required an experienced commercial banker, because this bank, in my opinion, had serious issues of shortfalls in commercial banking. May it be credit, you know, assessing credit and monitoring corporate credit, whether it's operational risk management, that means in, you know, knowing your customer, anti-money laundering uh, uh, schemes, which they have been fined by the Reserve Bank of India. And even on its own accounts, that for two consecutive years, the Reserve Bank had caught and penalized this bank for fudging uh, the books. So in such a sense, I would have been happier if you had a seasoned commercial banker taking charge. Now, having said that, I would also like to add that Shika Sharma's predecessor, uh, Dr. P.J. Nayak. Yes, I'm, I'm just stopping you here. I'm using your own arguments. Mr. P.J. Nayak was a bureaucrat. He was a member of the Indian Administrative Service. He took charge when Axis Bank was still UTI Bank, UTI as in the Unit Trust of India. This is way back in January 2000, uh, 19 years ago. At that time too, the bank was going through a very, very difficult period. Its asset quality was poor. It didn't have adequate capital, capital adequacy issues, but Mr. Nayak was able to turn around the bank. So. Why can't Mr. Amitabh Chaudhary be able to turn around uh, Axis Bank if Mr. P.J. Nayak could do it? See, one, in individual, it's all about the individual. And, you know, that we have to see whether Amitabh Chaudhary, you know, he does rise to the occasion. But second and more importantly, under P.J. Nayak's leadership, the bank on its board 
he got a lot of experienced PS, former PSU bankers on the board. He also got in from private equity. He was able to get private equity, and private equity's nominees on the board were very experienced, hardcore foreign commercial bankers. So there was a pool of solid commercial banking experience on the board, plus his senior management, although they, I don't think they had executive directors probably at that time, uh, but his senior executive management were all hardcore commercial bankers. Now the I, problem... I, right the, now you have Mr. S. Vishwanathan, who was a former managing director of the State Bank of India, who's on the board. Exactly, and this he, is the he, point. He, he's a, uh, an experienced right. uh, banker. A now, let me banker. tell you this. On, okay. Now, this is the strange anomaly which came in under Shika Sharma's leadership. Is that on a 15-member board, it had, I think, three executive or four executive directors, including Shika Sharma. None of the executive directors had been in hardcore commercial banking before they came to Axis Bank. None of them, I think, had ever worked in a bank branch. So you had this strange situation that on a prominent private sector bank board, there was only one individual, which is Mr. S. Vishwanathan, who was a hardcore commercial banker. Okay. Mr. Hazari, you know, you've used very, very strong language in your article in Smart Karma dated 10th of September 2018. You've talked about a so-called coterie that had been appointed by Shikha Sharmaji. You've gone to the extent of saying that if Mr. Amitabh Chaudhary wants to restore, restore confidence, you have suggested two heads should roll. This is not my language, it's your language. And those of Mr. V. Srinivasan, the Deputy Managing Director, who's been in charge of corporate credit since 2009, and Mr. Jairam Sridharan, the Chief Financial Officer. Who are you as an independent analyst to suggest whose heads should roll? In the private corporate sector, which I have worked all my life, and in the capital markets, I think one thing is very critical in the free market system is this accountability. The underlying principle is that if you've done your job well, you will be rewarded either through promotions or through incentives and, you know, incentives and increments. And if you do a poor job, you are fired. That is the basic principle of accountability in the capitalist system and the market is all about that. I have no problem if these executives had done their job well and they were rewarded with increments, bonuses, stock options. But in Axis Bank, the problem that is, it has is that of very poor corporate loan selection and monitoring. And for that, I hold Mr. V. Srinivasan, who's headed this department since he joined. As the deputy, who's the and deputy he's been man in managing director? Since 2008 or 9, when he joined, he's been looking after this portfolio. And this is the portfolio which has got the bank into trouble. All right. In the second case, is that Mr. Jai, uh, Mr. Jairam Sridharan, he has, the as the chief financial officer, he has signed off on two consecutive years of accounts, which is FY 2016 and FY 2017. Which have been questioned by the Reserve Bank. Exactly. So for me, it's very clear to me that heads have to roll. All right. My last question to you. Mr. Hazari, your, the title of your article, Ogean Stables, await the new appointee at Axis Bank, Mr. Amitabh Chaudhary in this case. What is this analogy? Kindly explain for the benefit of our viewers, those who are listening to you. See, I have written a series of articles on what I refer to as the mismanagement and the misgovernance this is of in, Axis Bank. In Smart Karma. On, on my own. On, on my own, plus this is all from my own research, but also some of it goes into smart karma. Now, in my opinion and my view, which I have documented, you have seen very poor corporate credit. You have seen their staff being arrested for money laundering, which shows very poor operational risk management. Now, these are very core functions of a bank. You have seen their accounts being questioned by the regulator. Now, if your accounts are questioned in a bank, and a bank is supposedly all about trust, 
what does it tell you about the bank? What does it tell you about the senior management? And the analogy with the OGN stables? Well, it all has to be cleaned up, and I hope that, uh, you know, that Mr. Amitabh does thoroughly clean it up. Okay, time alone will tell whether that happens or not. Mr. Amin Zahazari, thank you very much for speaking to NewsClick on the subject. This is the second series uh, of conversations we are having with Mr. Amin Zahazari. In the first uh, of the series, we dis discussed about HDFC and ILNF ILNFS Group. Uh, we've just completed a discussion on the challenges that await the new chief executive of officer of Axis Bank, formerly UTI Bank. We'll continue this series of conversations. And in the next series, we're going to look at recent developments that have been taking place at Yes Bank and whether after a Shakespearean tragedy, we're going to see some new developments and new changes, and whether Yes Bank will be able to get out of the crosshairs of the Reserve Bank of India. Keep watching News Click, and you're going to hear more conversations of the kind you'll never get to hear anywhere else, which critically examine the working of India's private banks. Thank you for being with us.